Welcome to Garza. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Hilary Gabriel. Hilary runs with the Galloway Running Group. She has a very interesting story because she's done her first marathon this year as a, practically as a leap of faith. So please welcome Hillary to the show. Let's get started, Hillary, by sharing a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? A little bit about your family. I was born in Northern California, and I'm the youngest of three girls. Moved to New York quite a while ago. <laughs> were you athletically inclined as a youngster? I was not at all athletic and kind. I was sort of forced to stay on the sidelines. Well, was there a story to that? Yeah. Well, I was born with a heart condition, so I wasn't really allowed to do anything athletic. A few years ago, I had that taken care of, and I had to learn how to be active. A special doctor that came up with a procedure because you know, it sounds like you lived with this for a long, long, long time. I was supposed to have open heart surgery many times, but I kept refusing to do it because I felt like the technology was going to get better. So I just kept doing my research over the years until I found a surgeon who was pioneering new techniques. Mm -hmm. And then I followed the surgeon for a couple of years until he'd pioneered doing multiple techniques in one surgery, and at that point, um, I was ready for it. <laughs> Well, tell us about the surgeon. Does he have a name, a hospital association? Let's give him a well, shout out. His name is Dr. Stephen Colvin, and unfortunately, he's no longer with us. I'm forever thankful. In which hospital was this? This was in um, New York University Hospital. Okay, and this was four or five years ago? A little more than that, yeah. Okay, and obviously was a success. Yes, it was. It was a really long road to recovery, but yes, success. Completely. Afterwards, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, you did all this research, you waited all this time, you found the right doctor. That is a tremendous uh, <laughs> path you took. And during that time, you were afraid to be physically active in terms of uh, exercise? I just did everything with a, with a dose of caution. Okay, and what kind of activities? Just like occasionally going to the gym and, and you know, a little dancing, nothing, nothing too strenuous. What did doctors advise in terms of physical exercise? They would joke around with me and say, okay, you can do a marathon, you can do anything you want, you've been rebuilt, you're like the bionic woman. And I'm like, I, I don't know, you know, I've never tried anything before, I've lived my whole life not doing anything too strenuous. This was something completely new, and I sort of had to learn, you know, test my limits. That's interesting that they encouraged you to go for the Mac. I think it's just sort of to open your eyes to possibilities. Okay. So how did you find a Galloway group? Because eventually, I think back in May, something happened. You know, I was recovering from another surgery, and I was in Carlshire's Park, just running up and down the steps and doing a little jogging just to stay active and, and try and heal. And I saw this group of runners doing a running clinic. And I looked at them and they weren't too intimidating. I walked up and I introduced myself and I think I actually spoke to you. You introduced me to Dee who was the director. It was very funny because she just looked at me and said, have you ever run a marathon? And I looked back at her and I was like, I've never run before. I thought she was completely crazy. <laughs> And then she said something like, well, why don't you run with us next week? I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you took a leap of faith. Absolutely. Great. Well, I remember that day very well because I was responsible for setting up that clinic with Dr. Mark Bachner. And when you came up, he was in the middle of filming, and, and I was happy to introduce you to Dean. Obviously, you came back the next week. I think I did miss any, except if, if I was away. You said our group wasn't intimidating, so you came to the first week. How did you fit in? I asked Dee to put me in the easiest group, in the slowest group. I said, you know what? I've never run before. Just let me start off at the back of the pack, and let me just see what it's like. And the first day, we ran six miles, and we finished, and I'm like, that's running? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm ready to do more. <laughs> I was in a one-on-one -on -one group, so one minute running, one minute walking. Mm -hmm. I think it was George. George. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, George. He's our most senior. We give him the, you know, the most difficult cases, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> he always breaks them in. No wonder you came back. He's such an entertaining guy. That was your first time you did six miles? Mm -hmm. 
first time I'd run, let alone run six miles. I stayed with George's group for two weeks. Mm -hmm. He encouraged me to move up to the next group, which I, which I think was Lynn's group. So he saw talent in you. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously, Galloway encourages to experiment. You know, especially for a first timer, you want to discover. You know, what's all this about? And experimenting and trying new groups. So I think that's very good of the Galloway group that uh, everybody is looking after each other in terms of uh, moving up. So you went to the next group and you stayed there for another couple of weeks. We ran a couple of times together. Right, and I think at one point you encouraged me to move up to another group. I think we moved up to Liz's group one day. Uh, to see if we could move a little faster. Yes, yes, I remember we were doing Magic Mile. We warm up first for, for a mile before we get to the track. And, I, and it was very successful, I think. Right, because I stuck with her for the rest of the season. She was doing... Three and ones. Three and one. Well, that's, that's a big jump from one and one to three and one. All right. Well, how are you feeling in terms of this newfound way of getting around New York? No, I loved it. It was good. I mean, the way that we trained, there was really no injury. I didn't feel sore afterwards, no matter how long the runs were. I never felt sore. The walking method of the strategy was conducive to your, you know, psychology. It certainly fine, yeah. <laughs> were are there any particular favorite runs during that time? Because you know, we were trying to mix it up. Did you get to run Prospect Park? Mm -hmm. That was our first really long run, where we ran across the Brooklyn Bridge and around Prospect Park. And that was, that was probably one of my favorite runs. Everybody enjoys uh, scooting across the Brooklyn Bridge. Was that the first time you? That was absolute first time running across that bridge. And what about running Prospect Park? First time there too. Uh, first time there too. Well, one of the things you discover is, as a runner, you, you get to see the world using this way of, of going around. Able to do the George Washington Bridge run? No, I was. I wasn't there. I think that was the weekend that Hurricane Irene was in town. Yes. Yes, and we purposely went out there early, very early. I think it was even dark when we started. <laughs> Any other runs that were particularly memorable during the Galloway? I really enjoyed most of our runs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, I enjoyed getting up in the morning early on Saturday, and most time I like getting out there before the sun rises, and when we catch the sun rising over the river, it's really beautiful. Yes, it is. Sometimes we run on the Hudson. And you did that a few times, mm -hmm. and that was. And then up to the cloisters one time. Yes, yes, another one long run. Yes, Riverside, Central Park, Prospect Park. It was all really a lot of fun, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to our winter runs. Uh, yeah, I know our our training is kind of finished for the season because you know New York City Marathon is done, but um, I look forward to our informal gatherings and. Oh yes, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that, but at some point you needed to make a decision about. Geez, uh, I'm training as if I'm going to do a marathon, but you weren't thinking about that at the beginning. Initially, I started training with no intention of doing a marathon. I thought it was completely out of the question. And then as I was training with my, my fellow runners, I was thinking, well, you know, maybe this is possible because so many of them would tell me their stories. And I'm like, well, maybe I should just try it. And it took me until, say, mid to end of July to actually make the commitment. And at that point, I said, you know, if I'm going to do a marathon, I'm going to New York, do New York City Marathon. In order to get in, I had to choose a charity. I went to the New York City Marathon website, and I started looking through all of the charities and trying to find a charity that I felt a, like a personal connection that would have something meaningful. Mm -hmm. That's when I saw Sanctuary for Families. Sanctuary for Families is an organization that helps victims of domestic violence and sex trafficking and their children. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they provide legal services, shelter services, counseling services. They go out into the community and they do a lot of outreach and education. And they've also been in New York for 25 years. Wow. So this is their 25th anniversary? Yes. Every year they serve a larger and larger population. And what was really kind of wonderful is that Sanctuary for Families was the first charity that core reason for existence was nonviolence that became part of the New York City Marathon list of charities. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty awesome because almost every other charity on the, the list up to that point had been mostly health oriented. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is very holistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This charity is non-gender based so it really 
It serves any person who's been a victim of domestic violence or of sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. and there's no religious affiliation, so mm -hmm. they really work very closely with law enforcement and with the judicial system in getting laws changed mm -hmm. and improved. You know, so in the 25 years they've been in existence, there's been really sort of watershed moments of, of where laws have been changed that they've been really instrumental in working on. Yeah, I'm familiar with domestic violence in the sense that I hosted a symposium on domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And the statistics are staggering. I believe in the United States alone, I think one in four women are affected with domestic violence sometime in their lifetime. In the world, I think it's more like closer to one in two, one in three. It's very startling. So glad you, you found them. You agreed to represent them in a marathon, uh, probably wear a special shirt. Not only are you doing your first marathon, you're probably doing your first charity fundraiser, and that's a, a scary thing. Yeah, it was my first time I've tried to raise funds for a charity, my first marathon. And I would have to say that training for the marathon was easier than raising the funds. <laughs> which is kind of hard to believe, but yes. Hopefully uh, people you know, seeing this program will look you up and, uh, and donate to the, not only to your cause, but really to the uh, Sanctuary for Families. Hillary, let's talk about something. Something else happened that uh, you did another charity before this one. Well, what was the story there? You had actually contacted me and told me about a runner who was unable to run in the Marine Corps Marathon. And I'd, I'd had initially an interest in, in possibly running the Marine Corps Marathon, but then when I finally had the courage to sign up, all the, all the slots were full. So For Marine Corps? For Marine Corps. So when you told me that there was someone's bid number was available, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll think about this. And then I look at the calendar, and they're a week apart. At that point, I was like, is this really a wise thing to do? So I spoke to a few people, <coughs> and I was highly discouraged from trying to run two marathons a week apart. And the reason, you know, I was told, you know, most very seasoned marathoners will not run two full marathons that close together, and, you know, you're setting yourself up for failure, you, you know, no words of encouragement. Except for one person who said, Go for it. I was also told that if I f find that by November 5th, the Saturday before the New York City Marathon, I could actually withdraw if I'm not feeling up to it and at okay. least have you, a place for a a 2000. Door. I had a back door. I, well, who was the person? It was the special organization that you were training with? Who was that? Well, what happened was, in, I think in one of our runs one day, I just popped into my head and said, you know what? When I if I run the Marine Corps, I would like to run with a wounded warrior. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember this conversation, but it was just like, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And I had no idea how to go about it. That's my motivation. This is what I want to do. So I actually contacted the Marine Corps base in Quantico, and I asked them what to do. And they connected me with the director of the Marine Corps Marathon, who in turn connected me with um, Team Semper Fi. Hurrah! Right, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. I'm Gunnery Sergeant Arlie Ermy. Hurrah! Right, Semper Fi. Right, yeah. But I want to thank everybody, everybody out there that's made this thing happen. Our first initial meeting with the Semper Fi Fund was in, in Bethesda. And there was a representative that, that came to us and said, this is a, a fund that is available to you if you're needing assistance, paying bills, plane tickets, ho hotel, whatever. You know, we needed help with to, to be able to be by his bedside. It's, it's a very humbling experience to have, you, have your brain heal. There really are no words to describe the the loss of pretty much everything and then the moments that come to light as you're healing that are just like dreams come true. Oh, I'm feeling great and I'm going to school right now 
at the uh, Le Cordon Bleu program here in San Francisco, and I'm going to be a chef <laughs> when I'm finished uh, with school. I'm going to the same school, the California Culinary Academy, to be a pastry chef. It wasn't for Semper Fi Fund. I mean, I wouldn't be going to school. I mean, to fund that is just a phenomenal thing. And we've told everybody from Semper Fi Fund, need catering services, let us know. We'll be there. <laughs> Anything you want, <laughs> we'll be there. Which is part of the Semper Fi Fund. They invited me to run with the Team Semper Fi. Now, did you send them that picture of you carrying that Marine on your back? Or because yes. that was a very <laughs> <laughs> inspiring photo. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but that Marine must have weighed 200 50 pounds at least. Uh, no. He was well built. He was, I think, six foot three and like 280 pounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they took you on, huh? They took me on, and, and the whole point was I was I was going to run with the team. I was not running to make time. It was I would run with whichever member of the team was falling back, and I would just stay with them. So whatever, whoever you know, needed a buddy to run with, that's, that's what I was going to do. It was a great plan, that's a great idea. So, it forces you not to be nervous because now you have a buddy to look after. And for him or her to look after you. Well, unfortunately, I, I arrived at, you know, at the race early in the morning on, on October 30th, and I couldn't find the running team. Hmm. They weren't at the starting line where I thought they were going to be, and there was just some of the hand cyclists from the team and the people who were running with them. I looked around for the team and I couldn't find them and they announced, you know, it's two minutes to starting time. So I just went right up to the front of the race where they told me, you know, you're going to start in the front with the, our running team and the hand cyclists. Mm -hmm. I got up there and I just they started running. A few minutes, I hear someone coming up next to me. And it's, it's a Marine, and I'm, I ask him, you know, are you part of Team Semper Fi? And he said, no, I'm, I'm running on my own, and this is my first marathon. And I'm like, well, I'm running on my own, and this is my first marathon too, and I'm supposed to be running with Team Semper Fi. And I said, would you want to run with me? And he said, yeah, sure. And I said, you know, if, you know, I asked him how far he'd ever run before, and he said, I've only run 13 miles. Was he wounded because you thought he was a member of the team? Well, yes, he was. Um, he'd been wounded in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and he had um, an amputation on the right leg from below the knee. Mm -hmm. I said to him, you know, if you, if you stick with me, we'll, we'll try to do this run-walk method that I use, and we'll see if it's more comfortable. Okay. And let's try and get through this whole marathon. And so I said, you know, we tried it for a little bit, and, and I think he was, he enjoyed how, you know, this method because it allowed, you know, the way we run and walk, you can run, and then you, you rest when you're walking, mm -hmm. and then you run, mm -hmm. and you're able to, your legs recover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We actually were, uh, it was kind of difficult because I was, we, I was trying to encourage him to, like, hold back the pace because we were going out pretty fast. Oh, okay. That's a common mistake for a first time, but it sounds like a good training because he had the good sense to hold back. Well, I was trying to hold, pull the reins in as much as possible. We made it through, I think, about the first 14 miles this way, and then it became a little too uncomfortable, and I said, you know what? We need to make it to our, there's a bridge that you have to make that's right. At the Marine Corps, and if you don't make that bridge, you get put on a yellow school bus, and you get disqualified. It's not an option. <laughs> so you gave him a goal. A I goal said, with the bridge. I said, I said, you know what? If you can't run anymore, let's walk. And we can walk quickly, but let's, let's make it to the bridge. Okay. Only we didn't know where the bridge was. <laughs> So we always kept thinking it's right around the next bend. Okay. <laughs> so it's really about mile 20. 
okay, you got six miles to go. <laughs> we made it to the bridge. That was a big accomplishment. We made it to the finish. Well, that's great. Now, you said it was uncomfortable. But was, did he have an artificial leg or something? Yes. Was there something special about that leg that uh, made it uncomfortable? Well, it wasn't the running. It wasn't the proper one for running. Okay. It was great to be able to, you know, that he was able to, he did the whole marathon with this. I just, I really hope that he gets the right one and, and joins Team Semper Fi and keeps running and does the full marathon and well, he did next, that, that next full year marathon. though, but like running. The running whole, with, uh, with the right leg. And the right, you know, with his team and I think it'd be wonderful. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm, you must have made a best friend there forever there. You're probably very grateful. I really, really enjoyed running with him. That's great. And at the end, were you given uh, a medal? And what was that like? I think the first lieutenant gives you a medal. Oh, the medal's wonderful. It's a, it's a great looking medal. Your first taste of bling? Yes. That's very important. Was that a, a mo it must have been very emotional. It was. It was It was nice to, you know, get the medal and go pose in front of the war memorial. And it was, it was a great race. Great. So that was your first experience, and you thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, you know, we should mention that we don't want to give the impression that you were abandoned. What happened was the Marine Corps, is, I think it's unique, has a policy where you can transfer your bid to another person through an administrative process. So and that's what happened here. My friend Michelle, who was doing her 10th anniversary run, couldn't do it. And, uh, and she reached out to her friends, and I thought it was gone because, oh, this, this won't last. But fortunately, we got it for you. And so it was perfectly legal, and you ran under your own name, under your own number. We uh, want to make that clear, you weren't abandoned, because oh. it's, it's, you know, you're not, probably not familiar with, yeah, there are people that run the marathon, just show up and run. Oh, okay. <laughs> without, without signing up. You did it the right way. I, I'm hoping that other marathons will follow the Marine Corps policy of letting you transfer, transfer the because that's very unusual. You did Marine Corps, you're feeling wonderful, now you have to decide, you know, well, am, am I going to do New York? So what was the thinking process there? I just listened to what my body said that week. I didn't run during the week. I just relaxed and, you know, tried to have a really relaxing and enjoyable week. And then come Saturday, I thought about it, and no, well, I'm doing it. November 5th was a cutoff cut date. date. Okay, and that Saturday was what, November something? It was November 5th. November, oh, was I waited till the absolute last second. And you said still felt great. And I was like, I was feeling good. Did you check in with, because uh, I, I think you were training it with Asphalt Green. Did you check in with them? They must have been wanted to know how you did. On Tuesday morning, I did go to my speed training and I just did the warm-ups, and I just told my coach, um, Neil what Cook. What's the name of the co oh, coach? Cook. Neil Cook. Neil Cook. Now he's the one who encouraged you. Yes. Well, we gotta give him a shout out. Out of way, Neil. <laughs> I just did the warm-ups, and I said, you know what? I'm going home. And I just rested the rest of the week and okay. took it easy and listening to your body, which is absolutely, which is another mantra. Well, you've been, you know, this is great. You were well trained by the Galloway Group, and this is just by talking to other people, showing up at the clinics. That's wonderful. That's a great success story. So now comes Marathon Sunday. Did you take the bus? How did you get there? I took the Galloway bus, and that was very convenient. And took us to the field where we waited and waited <laughs> and waited. <laughs> because I was really, you know, I, I, I gave my real time that I thought was what I was actually going to spend running the race when I put my application in. So, of course, I was in the last wave of the runners. Uh -huh. During that, the time that we were on the field, Channel 2 News was there. Uh-huh. I, I had the opportunity to be interviewed by Channel 2 News and, and speak a little bit about my charity. Sanctuary for Families. Sanctuary for Families. That was kind of exciting. <laughs> it's a really nice thing to do before the start of the race. And then I ran the race with two other of my team members. And, and, and I think you did a better time the second time around. I was 39 minutes faster than any of my 26-mile runs. Okay. 
was excellent, excellent. So you really felt great. I mean, the energy that the city provided must have just lifted you, gave, gave you wings. It was really great. Uh, it was it was great coming around every corner and had, practically having you know the music and the people and you know the crowds high fiving. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> and you got another medal. Yes, another medal. Yes. <laughs> so you got two in uh, in two weeks. Wow. Are we? Your family and uh, and your friends probably couldn't be more proud for you. They think I'm a little crazy. <laughs> a little crazy. <laughs> you did all the right things. You, you really listened to your body, and you didn't try to push it. You, you held back. Even you even held back a marine. I mean, that is something. Those guys want to take charge, but you ever held him back, finish it. Well, this is such a great success story. You know, we're almost out of time, but I just wanted to touch a little bit upon, you know, what are some of your future goals and challenges? I definitely want to do more marathons. Excellent. I don't know which ones yet, <laughs> but I, I would love to do the Marine Corps one again. I'd love to do New York City again. There are so many wonderful marathons. I know. You say you're going to continue running with the Galloway Group for the winter. Absolutely. Yes, they meet uh, every Saturday, I think at 8 o'clock in the morning in front of the Time Warner Building at Columbus Circle because it's, uh, the area is protected from the elements. And I think at that time, whoever shows up, usually two or three, sometimes more, and you guys will decide, okay, we feel like four or five miles, whatever the group decides. That's a wonderful way to stay connected and do the runs. And of course, you've probably done a few New York City Roadrunners races? Actually, no. I you did, haven't. I did Fifth Avenue Mile. Okay. And then I did, I was supposed to do the Bronx Half, but Irene canceled oh, okay. it. Okay, canceled it. Well, okay. That was it. I, I haven't done any other races. Wow, you have you have a great future ahead of you running and because you, you're doing a very sensible thing and it's probably very good for your heart. I think so. Check with your doctor. Got permission from my team up at NYU. And actually, one of the members of the team has run the New York City Marathon. And he would have run it this year, but his knees were bothering him. Well, maybe he'll do it in a future year with you. That would be great. Well, thank you so much for, for coming in and sharing this story. I'm very, very happy to know you and to be running with you in the future. Thank you.